So let's focus on some science and environmental related stories. Environmentalists have cited forests in the Volta region as the most endangered in the world. The experts say with the current rate of tree felling, there will be no forests in 10 years and this could cause environmental cost and desertification. Well, residents of Old Bike and the Volta region are worried at the development as tree felling continues to take a toll on them. Evelyn Tingma was there. Residents of Old Baika in the Volta region claimed the act has been increasing over the years. The community depends largely on farming, but tree felling has taken the hardest toll. Majority of the farms have been destroyed. Most farmers looked depressed and their owners in a similar state. Coco, cassava and palm plantations had been destroyed through the use of heavy earth moving machines and logs. The fear is that forests in the area could be depleted totally if nothing is done to stop the tree felling craze here. My job is not to complain but to inform. I've written a report, I've given it to the uh, Jessica District Forestry and also traveled to Ho to give them my report of the incidents and what happened and what was transpired. I believe this has been going on incrementally for generations and but now the machinery has gotten much bigger and much more destructive so what you've seen today took place in just a couple of hours so you can just imagine how much destruction if 20 or 30 of these cutters are out in one day they can cut dozens of trees and you multiply that by a year and this is why the world environmentalists say that the Volta region is the most vulnerable forest region in the world the most in danger so I can see because every time I come every time I wake up I hear the woodcutters it's not that the woodcutters shouldn't be allowed to cut but we must do this orderly because we need wood for our homes we know that but there needs to be regulation and enforcement and, and so that we don't destroy the very trees that we'll need for our children for the future. The Volta Forest Products Limited, a wood company, was blamed. The issue we are talking about right now is about the devastation of the environment by the Volta uh, Forest Products people uh, by cutting down uh, trees and then pulling it over uh, people's crops and then cassava farms and that is very very bad for uh, for us all what is most uh, annoying is just looking at the left hand of my side is a community and then the cutting trees from the forest to the community and destroying all the trees around the community as an MP of this area and particularly so from this community, I think this is totally uncalled for. I am not here to destroy anybody's business, but the fact is that everybody must do his business in a genuine manner, in which case the people in the community must have their peace to live. But if somebody will come to the environment and just destroy things like this, what do you expect me as a member of parliament to do? Really, the steps I've taken are as follows. I've really called for the contract document that has been given to them. But to your amazement, their permit has expired on April this year, and they are now in the process of renewing it. While they've not finished renewing the permit, look at this they are doing to the environment. And so we've alerted the forestry department, who have served them a letter to actually atone for what they have just done. You cut the trees without people's notice. And for all I heard from a woman whose uh, farm has been destroyed, 20 Ghana cities was given, even left in the house for her as a reward for what they have done. Just look on the road right now. 
this is a cocoa tree that has been destroyed. And so all that you see along the trail are cocoa trees that have been destroyed. Nobody pays for anybody. Nobody asks permission from anybody. And they continue to destroy people's crops this way. I think it is time for this type of thing to stop. And then the powers that uh, be must call these Volta forest product people to order because we can't accept this. If they have been doing this in the past, I am telling them right now, they will not have that opportunity. This is just a tip in the iceberg. Going through all the Bwem communities, they are unacceptable elements there, just because this is the way they destroy crops and other people's properties. When you look on our roads, the bridge, because of the heavy uh, load that they are using to cross the bridges, the bridges are cracking under. And they are not going to actually repair that or the government to support me to actually be on them to rehabilitate some of these bridges. All the uh, trees that are being cut here, the plows are exported outside Ghana. So in any case, Ghanaians are not even enjoying the plywood or from the trees that they are pulling down. They export them to Burkina Faso. They export them to Cote d'Ivoire. They export them to Nigeria. So what are we enjoying from what they are doing to our lands? When we talk about global change, when we talk about uh, climate change and then a global warming, what are we talking about? We're saying that the weather is changing right now. Here in Baika, like in July, we should be seeing a lot of sunshine. Now it is July that it is raining. So our poor farmers cannot even calculate the time it will rain or it will not rain. Due to the nature of operations that are going on by these uh, uh, timber operators or loggers, we we'll need more personnel in the Jassican district and more logistics so that we can protect uh, the rest of the forest that is left uh, for the people and our grandchildren to come. As the back and forth continues, the farmers look on helpless as their mainstay disappears. They demanded government's immediate attention. <laughs>